I'm excited about the opportunity to present my vision to you this afternoon. Digital health represents a tremendous opportunity for growing closer in Europe and staying healthy together. Let's now focus on leveraging AI and digital technologies for inpatients. The core of a hospital is surgery. The operating room is the number one value driver, but also the biggest efficiency leak due to many analog processes. In order to provide access to better and more consistent treatments for every patient, to leverage AI and to disseminate knowledge and best practice, we must digitize surgery. I now want to provide you insights into state of the art in surgery today. The biggest opportunity for AI is the connection of data between different domains, like Google Maps connecting the actual digital map with GPS coordinates, leveraging a powerful statistical database with layers for topography, traffic flows, and public transportation. The augmented street view links to this database to create the unique ecosystem that makes Google Maps so powerful. So how can we create a kind of Google Maps for the human body? I start by using this digital OR system to aggregate and correlate data from different diagnostic sources, creating a digital twin of the patient. I use this AI-based brush tool to uh, define the tumor and uh, by then moving to um, get a 3D view that provides me access to the different layers of anatomy that I can peel away like the different layers of an onion, making the anatomy computer processable. This is possible through a universal anatomical model that is based on a massive database uh, that contains variability, relational knowledge and uh, clinical properties of thousands of structures. Um, when I move further here, I see the so-called fiber tracks, the telephone wires of the human brain. In neurosurgery, I can use them to um, access the tumor and avoid those structures. However, they can be used based on AI uh, algorithm to simulate the spread of tumor cells in the brain. Let's now move towards the surgical equivalent of a GPS system. We will use these cameras to track the position of a surgical instrument um, in real time. So as we move the pointer over the surface of the skull, we can see in real time the position of my instrument and all the structures underneath on how I can safely access my tumor passed by critical structures. By tracking an instrument, I digitize the path to my tumor for this patient, but by doing that over multiple patients, I can aggregate powerful data and knowledge. So now let's add video. Neurosurgeons rely on microscopes to resect tumors. And of course, a microscope only reveals the surface um, of the um, anatomy when, uh, from what you see. However, adding now um, augmentation, you can see the structures underneath, such as the uh, tumor and how it extends uh, beyond what is visible, but also the fibers and uh, the uh, structures that wrap around the tumor. So you have seen how the microscope has moved in robotically and in fact there is a growing number of solutions um, that are robotic and help assist surgery such as these type of arms that I can use to align to a particular trajectory and then I can automatically um, get the perfect access to um, access my tumor or those robotic imaging devices that can um, take additional images during surgery updating my anatomical model. So you can imagine how those robotic solutions create a wealth of additional data and therefore a tremendous opportunity for AI. Going back to the example of Google Maps, it is the linking of these domains that creates a powerful ecosystem. We need to aggregate and share data across multiple patients to unlock better treatments of life-threatening diseases or even enable cures. Right now, a lot of treatment concepts are overly simplistic. They are more or less based on one-size-fits-all approach with very little customization. For example, despite 50 years of research and 3,000 papers published on the treatment of brain metastasis, we we'll still use either 23, 18 or 15 gray of those. Why not 19.3 gray? We need to analyze large amounts of very carefully validated and recorded treatment results to get better answers and achieve personalized treatments for every patient. 
For inpatients, it is important to move from paying for a specific procedure independent from the patient benefit to value-based care. We need to capture and evaluate the entire treatment process. This will provide all citizens with better care at lower cost. There are three areas we need to focus on. We need better data, we need to share this data, and we need to become better in using the data and products derived from the data. How do we get better data? The typical hospital information system has been built over decades with billing and administrative needs in mind, not around the level of detail necessary and meaningful from a clinical perspective. However, innovation will gravitate to where the best data is available. One of our core uh, problems is that we need to address um, is standardization of data, data semantics and interfaces. For decades, the healthcare system has struggled to connect system A to system B, even within the same hospital. Now we want to connect data across hospitals, apps, developers and domains. Much of the world has begun to rely on the standard of FHIR, which is based on an internet technology widely used in industries outside of healthcare. It is time for us to do so as well. The HL FHIR um, standard defines how healthcare information can be exchanged between different computer systems regardless of how it is stored in these systems. FHIR significantly lowers the barrier of entry for new software developers to support healthcare needs. Everybody talks about the need for structured data. The clinical nodes in the average EHR won't get us far. They're not sufficient in terms of machine readability and quality. We need to capture data primarily through structured workflows following established clinical guidelines. This ensures conformity and completeness of documentation, for example, radiology reports or tumor board meeting documentation. Moreover, it will provide objective data um, driving um, AI, such as detailed radiomics, and enable effective longitudinal studies of degenerative diseases or cancer. We need to move away from unstructured nodes and provide patients and caregivers across Europe with an objective assessment of disease severity or classification and therapy response. One of the very successful steps the US has taken towards value-based care was the promotion of incorporating patient-reported outcome measures, PROMS, into the care cycle. In essence, the patient would receive a text message or email asking to complete a detailed survey to assess their functional performance and quality of life after the hospital stay. This enables remote patient monitoring to detect a potential problem and to alert the care team to take appropriate action. PROMS also allow comparison of patient outcomes across different therapy methods, healthcare facilities and therapeutics at a much greater detail and very important from an unbiased patient perspective. In order to ensure all patients in Europe receive the same level of care and for the EU to become competitive in AI, we need to broadly adopt PROMS. We now want to focus on the opportunity of image data. I previously introduced the concept of structured diagnostic and video data using my Google Maps analogy. For any cancer registry, we need to capture not only the detailed assessment of volumetric treatment response, but also the correlation of relevant treatment parameters along the patient pathway, such as the distribution of radiation dose in relation to complications. With a large-scale effort, Europe can lead the world of volumetric tumor data, attracting leading clinical and industrial researchers so we can beat cancer together. Neither American data capitalism nor Chinese data socialism are consistent with our European values. Together, we can build what I call a social data economy. That will allow for patient-centric, empowering, discrimination-free participation in better healthcare for every citizen in Europe. The European health data space will serve as the legal and regulatory framework to achieve this. 
industry needs to actively participate in collaboratively creating a technical infrastructure on the foundation of safety, privacy and transparency. An infrastructure that all patients can trust. With the GDPR, Europe has data protection rules that have become a role model for the world. Let's build a framework together, specifically for healthcare, that can achieve the same. Because without a data strategy, there will be no AI strategy. Here is what it will take. If our goal is a patient-centric concept, we need to start with capturing the patient's will relative to healthcare data in a meaningful granularity. Such a consent should be standardized following a broad public debate and it should be universally applicable to at least all inpatient data. If I put myself in the shoes of a patient and probably um, at some point um, myself I you know, will be in the role of a patient, I prefer to record my intent independent of the emotional stress of a specific emergency. The consent needs to include specifics for using select types of data, possibly for specific um, clinical fields, and clearly defined groups of uh, potential users. A digital version could move from coarse to fine, allowing me to customize step by step the settings in the granularity I want. It is important that we specifically separate it between clinic, science and industry. For example, a patient may consent to having data shared just for a specific disease field with just the manufacturer of the products involved with his or her treatment. Standardizing such a patient consent could be a crucial cornerstone towards the European health data space. In Europe, society is generally cautious about how digital data is being used and shared with industry, which is deeply rooted in our value system. To address this, we need a clear and consistent set of rules for all players, a code of conduct. The code of conduct should be designed to um, execute the previously discussed universal patient consent in a trustworthy way. I advocate a compulsory requirement of licensing data within a circle of authorized recipients per the consent at reasonable terms. This will promote data-driven business models based on generating incremental value of data and will sanction models just based on taking over the toll booth. The reimbursement in healthcare has created an incentive for mostly large tech, uh, com med tech companies to lock in a complete value chain around a specific treatment by orchestrating several data-driven products around an implant, for example. The results are overpriced and incompatible monolithic island solutions that are um, resulting in data uh, silos. This cripples competition and uh, makes market access for small companies resulting um, in, uh, in more expensive and uh, innovative treatments uh, difficult. Um, all industry players should be required to design and offer open interoperable systems that um, should encode semantics to the extent possible on fire following applicable implementation guidelines and fully disclosed data models. Connecting new solutions should require no project effort or cost for healthcare providers. All of this should be a prerequisite to participate in public tenders. Companies processing search engine queries, GPS data or natural language are in a privileged position for profiling citizens. However, I feel very uncomfortable by the same company processing healthcare data. The GDPR calls for privacy by design. Based on this principle, I propose an organizational and legal separation between these types of data processing companies. This would require Amazon, Google, Microsoft to adapt their European health ambitions to the European values and establish organizational, legal and technical walls between consumer data and healthcare data. Such an initiative would open up fair opportunities for hundreds of companies to compete on the merits of their innovation and in line with our European values. A big part of the discussion on shared um, data circles around central data repositories and in fact big data registries provide valuable insights. 
At the same time, there are hundreds of smaller multi-center clinical trials and specialized data hubs that are critical for keeping innovation process agile and Europe competitive. I propose to implement a hybrid structure for the European health data space that combines centralized and decentralized data clusters using trust centers of different scope or reach that can synchronize data as needed and in line with the patient consent provided. Such a federal model is more in line with the structure of Europe and allows synchronization of multiple national registries uh, without slowing anybody down. We also need to remove barriers for using data. We need to um, harmonize the national interpretation of GDPR across Europe and use the opportunities of the regulation for the benefit of all patients. Not using this data is killing people at scale. I dream of a framework that makes Europe the leading hub for AI developers in healthcare with safe and privacy preserving access to data. The, most powerful technology, um, um, the more powerful technology gets, the more do we need um, to ensure that the clinical users can successfully leverage the new capabilities. Scaling technology faster and more efficiently calls for new digital tools. The industry of computer games can be an inspiration of how digital tools can reinvent training and accelerate learning for physicians. These virtual technologies can also uh, be a contribution to the Green Deal of the EU, reducing the need for travel and the CO2 footprint. It will also allow to scale innovation globally, democratizing access to adequate healthcare. AI and data-driven innovations will provide us with exponentially growing wealth of information. How can we inject this information into our clinical workflow to maximize its use? Spatial computing, also known as augmented or mixed reality, will be a powerful innovation that will change how we consume and distribute information, merge the digital world with our physical world. AI will detect instruments, events, workflow steps on the fly and then check the relevant information when and where you need it. The future of healthcare is bright. Never before was the outlook for patients with life-threatening diseases better than right now. Healthcare is one of the few segments in which no American or Chinese digital platform has yet emerged. Together we can implement a technical solution for the European health data space that can lead the world in innovative capabilities and privacy at the same time promoting our values.